right, so we're about here on the range and uh, we're gonna give a couple of demos first. So Mike, why don't you just, if you can, just walk us through what a low port room entry comes, uh, looks like. And you know, we're not gonna do stack, we're clear and safe, we've double checked, but um, Mike's just kind of like talk us through what a basic low port entry looks like. We're not worried about um, sectors of fire right now. We're just worried about getting through the getting through the threshold. So, um, go ahead. Let's pick it up. All right, guys. So, if I'm coming over here and I'm on, obviously I'm inside of this room, and this is the threshold and the doorway, and I'm coming into another room. This is considered a center-fed room because I have a point of domination here and a point of domination here. We typically call this the cut. Um, this is the place that more than likely you're going to get shot from. Um, outside of the threshold of another doorway because I could see all this open space. So it's here or here. So if I'm going in low, low ready, which is, uh, you know, it's very typical to see an army guy doing uh, uh, movements from the low ready in the stack. I'd have a guy in front of me and that guy might go right. What I would do is I would hug my gun, butt it up against him with my gun oriented, obviously down at the ground. And as soon as I clear open space to see my point of domination or to get around this wall, I'll take the gun up and then straight come into that point of domination. That's a basic um, of a, a low ready and then coming up into my point of domination. Remember the, the point of CQB, especially with the center fed room, is to come in with a simultaneous clear of each point of domination. The idea is there's a bad guy here, right? And if I'm coming in, um, I would have be hugged up on that number one guy just to get that into that point of domination at the same time he's clearing his corner. A lot of time it uh, breathes well, but it doesn't execute as well. I, actually, I got a question. What, I've never done low port entries. I've only done high port. So when we're in the stack, if I can get the camera to come around here, say we're heading this way and you're the number one man, my gun is like this yeah. up here. Yep. So at the low ready, Am I down like this? Just like that, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you gotta be really cognizant that my barrel's not aimed right at your fucking cap. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, and the uh, one of the things that's been articulated, I talked about this years ago in a podcast, was the fact that in the GWAT, when we were doing joint operations with the Navy, we thought that what you guys were doing was Hollywood. That's mm -hmm. what Hollywood guys do until we started getting into small contained uh, buildings where you know, you don't have a room for an assaulter and you have to squeeze two big dudes in kit through a threshold simultaneously. Um, again, that breathes real well in training but doesn't execute well in real life in combat. And so you should understand that army catwalks observe and control from the top down, meaning there's a catwalk where a controller is standing on top, an instructor is standing on top, observing down. And if I have the gun here at the high port pointed at the instructor up on the catwalk, that's not um, safe. And so institutionally, they didn't allow us to do a lot of that. And so we had to start doing a lot of this from the uh, from the low carry or the or the uh, the low ready. Um, but obviously, war has changed a lot of things, and we've adapted to that. Um, I used to do. So did you? Sorry to cut you off. So did you guys actually switch like mid deployment or? We did, we did. I, I believe the big switches came in 06, 07, 08, um, when we were doing a lot of CQB with the Navy and we started evolving in Pro Bowl which is we would do, we would do a dry or we do it with CERTA and then we do it with UTMs. Uh, we might, you know, we might add CERTA, which is the plastic tip munition which can still kill you, but it's, it's not, uh, the muzzle velocity isn't as high. But then eventually we get to a live fire. And when you're doing a live fire, if there's guys on the catwalk, we would have to change our tactics. And we might be like this for UTMs or SIMs. Would we would eventually have to get our guns down mm. out of the catwalk or clear the catwalk to be able to do that. No shit. And I distinctly remember doing ops with uh, East Coast teams in 06. We were doing joint ops and then I remember making fun of the dudes and going, hey, this is, that's kind of crazy that they're, they're doing that until I realized that it was more advantageous and it works. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're, I think the biggest point, like people articulate in different ways, but the biggest point is if you're in front of me and you're my number one man, 
I have a barrel here. But, and so I am so close up on this operator that when we go through that single doorway and I give him the squeeze and he goes into his point of domination, I am on his ass to drop this barrel into that point of domination. Um, there's a couple other benefits, but that's one of the most uh, advantageous for me. I guess, uh, I mean, we're a little short on time, so I'm not gonna dance around words, but nobody take any offense of what I'm saying. But so I've never done low ready and, and you're saying the only reason was training? Yeah, well, I, I, the biggest reason was the way our, our uh, CQB shoot houses were built. And, you know, I remember doing tape drills in the infantry in the 90s, uh, doing it this way. Like even oh, with, with hands, doing rehearsals on engineer tape, um, and then going to counterterrorism units and operating that way, and we still did it that way. It wasn't until, like I said, 06, 07, and instead, until we started realizing that that was just a better alternative. Yeah. And then we started building the infrastructure a little bit different. Now, there are different takes. Look, I'm a SIF guy. I grew up in the Commanders and Extremist Force. Uh, grew, grew up in special operations doing counterterrorism. I know there's going to be outliers. Safawik, Sephardic Committee, I, I got it. I, your, your individual deployment, but from my perspective, from my eyes, uh, that's what I was seeing. All right. I was just curious because we never trained low forward and I mean, I don't know how your guys' catwalks were set up, but it was our cadre's job to stay the fuck away from our muzzles. We weren't concerned with what's going on in the catwalk. They followed the flow. Yeah. And so it never really effective training. Maybe it should have. I don't yeah. know. I but mean, eventually Safar Tech, uh, which is our CQB shoot house school, um, eventually adapted to that. And I remember distinctly going to range 37 and seeing different variations and they were definitely teaching high carrier, high port. Uh, but that took a little bit of G watt to get that ingrained. Uh, I think another consideration is the reason the Navy did that is because you, you do maritime ops yeah. and you're on a boat. Uh, you don't want to shoot a round through the bottom of the boat. Yeah. And so high port was a consideration to keep the gun up and out of the deck. Um, but for us, we don't operate on boats. We're not, we don't roll that way. So it yeah. wasn't a consideration for us. Interesting. Well, I'll just run through a demo of our version of high port. Might have changed by now. I don't know. But, you know, so <clears throat> when we're in the stack, we're always, if I can get you to be a number one man just for a sec, but when you're coming in the stack, you always have your gun uh, kind of roll of thumb as barrels higher than the tallest guy's head. And then my other hand's on his shoulder, so when I'm ready, I squeeze him. He peels, goes in. I go to retract it, and then I'm punching back out. So I've always found just some uh, like some benefits. Uh, I'm gonna run by myself for a second here, but some benefits is I can personally get on my sights faster coming from a high port. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I've been doing it for so fucking long. But I've I... tested it. We've proven it's faster than coming up from the low ready. Yeah. I mean, if you, a lot of guys anchor, I, I think a bad habit is anchoring a pivot point off your buttstock and doing this because of the lull and latency. I think this is more effective. Mm -hmm. But from, if, from coming to this movement, snapping it down from this movement where typically you're not at a 45, you're coming from like a 90 and you're mm -hmm. driving the gun up. Snapping the gun up is slower, obviously, than the minimal movement of dropping the barrel down a couple degrees. Yeah, I I think it's a lot more aggressive, too. At least I feel like coming from a high port is a lot more aggressive, and it's a ton more energy. Um, I mean, I don't know if you guys were doing strikes or anything, and um, but holy shit, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can really fuck somebody up. Um, by snapping out like that. So, uh, if I can get the camera right around over here, you can just watch my entry. Um, so let's say, and I want to set it up here in a minute, but let's say you can't see this side of the doorway, you know, and you're entering. One thing that I've always wondered is how, coming from a low port, how do you deal with somebody? Like, I enter this room. And there's a fucking bad guy right here. And my gun's at a low port. 
Are you just switching a pistol? Are you hitting the deck and letting the guy behind you take him? Or are you fighting it out? Because when we come from a high port, my gun's right here. If anybody's in my way, then, you know, maybe they need to be shot, maybe they don't. But I'm already right here, so technically I can engage from here all the way up to extended. Yeah. And uh, I'll just run through that real quick just so you guys can see what it would look like uh, full speed. So coming up on the door, boom, and I'm back like I snap out immediately. I give it that aggressive, that aggressive snap out so that I can, anything that's in my way is fucking going down no matter what. I mean, there's just gonna be hard to stop that but <clears throat> so I'm gonna ground my weapon real quick and I'm gonna move uh, a little buddy over here and if you don't mind I'd just like to see how you would attack that coming through the door as, at a low ready. So obviously, you know, there's an advantage and it, it's the reason why I adopted and evolved my tactics to go into a high carry because the, the, one of the biggest advantage advantages and what I teach is that when you have two points of control with both your hands on the weapon system, you can manipulate this in space. This idea that you're a tank and you're a turret swinging around a gun off one pivot point is a bad ideology, especially in dynamic, fluid situations where you have to move around obstacles constantly. And, you know, if this wasn't a guy, this would be furniture or some other obstacle. So you have to have a, 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 ta a tactic in which to pick this off your shoulder and manipulate this gun in space. When I teach people is when you take this gun and you put it out of the line of fire, meaning uh, you reduce your ability to react to an immediate threat or an imminent threat, then you're putting the gun to sleep. So if I have the gun here and I see a threat, but I can't manage the threat because I can't break a shot and end that person's life or at least get a uh, physical reaction by shooting him in the knee, the groin, the stomach, and the chest, then I'm at, at a huge advantage. This defeats that. So if I stepped in here, the idea is when I clear this space, I need to be snapping that gun to that position. Um, which again, you're moving from this, dancing around the guy's legs, hopefully he understands footwork and CQB, and hopefully getting that spot to where you can clear it simultaneously. But you think about the delay and the latency from coming from here to where the gun's present. That's a lot of time. Yeah. So if I, if I came here, and this is just regressing to old tactics, and I stepped in here and he was here, uh, I, I understanding retraction would retract the gun take shots and then drive through the target but again i've adapted myself and evolved and so i wouldn't be doing that that's why i that's why i do like the high port where if i come through here before i clear the space my muzzle is breaking that corner even if i'm offset and then as i drive i'm bringing the gun out so if i had to run into this dude uh, i could use some tony blower tactics um uh, i could muzzle strike him or if i could put him in the dirt if i had to yeah um the answer is I digressed and tap dance around that because I'd never do it. Not, yeah. any, not anymore. Okay. I was just curious, you know, what, I mean, because, yeah, we were getting made fun of by every fucking branch for a, a long time. And, mm -hmm. and I just always wondered, you know, well, I mean, not that that scenario happens that often, but it does. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it definitely has the potential. So... <clears throat> coming through again so coming in I kind of slow down right here and wait for my train to catch up or if their heads up enough then I'm just fucking rolling through but that's the, the exact same thing I push mine I move mine in space right here I tuck it into my elbow and then oh shit boom, moving right through them you know or you know so get some out of the way in a hurry or, you know, engaging. Yeah. And I think another big advantage is if you stand right here and you're, you're doing cross coverage. If I, look, if you're on a door, especially a center fed door, doing cross coverage is how 
you use two eyes, two sets of eyes, and two sets of eyes is better than one because we can clear sections of this entire room and then have have opposing, we have opposing threats, obviously, because we have two different uh, things, but we're covering those opposing threats and we're entering this room with cross coverage. So a, a huge advantage of high port again is if I'm here with high port and he's got that covered and he makes the commitment to come in and then he goes into his point of domination, so moves slow and he comes in, I could snap the gun up over his head and as he breaks in, simultaneously clearing that point of domination. Um, with low port, listen, I'll just demonstrate the, the low, low carry or low port. Now remember, there is some guys who are going to go, oh, that's not low carry. Well, low port or low carry to me is the same thing because this um, is not getting out of the way of anything, right? This is getting over people's heads. So the difference is if I'm here on this guy, I could be butted up against him here. But if I try to do the same thing with a gun here, it's in his back and yeah. there's nowhere to go. So where does this gun go? It goes down in the dirt because that's Offline. what I got. So there is no difference to me. So as he's coming here, I'll show you with low port. Imagine he's coming slowly, right? Go. And then my gun's down. And now I have to wait for this wall time. I just flagged my leg because that's the only option I have in step, stepping right into a center fed room is clearing this way. It'd be inefficient to do it this way. So I already just swept my leg. Now I'm stepping out here and then I'm ugh, trying to fit the gun into the space. There's no advantage to that. From the head down is where everybody's bodies are. And if I'm trying to swing my barrel around people's bodies friendly, then that's not a good advantage. Right here in this space, nobody's head's above uh, the neckline. So uh, we're all here. My barrel can manipulate around that space, be safe, and then snap into position when I need to. That yeah, makes a lot of sense. I mean, do you feel, having done both, do you feel there are any advantages to a low port? Uh, if so, it, what, what would they be? Look, it's it's minimal at best, but the the, the there's some some benefits to low port depending on the situation. Um, there are instances where you'll have obstacles that are overhead. You could be in a, in low rooms. You could be in containers. You could be in confined spaces where you have no other option. But at that point, it's not a consideration to do low carry. It's just a consideration to manipulate your barrel around space, obstacles, etc. So I don't think, I honestly don't think that tactically, especially in a collective task like CQB, it's necessary or advantageous at all to carry at low carry. Interesting. Well, I mean. Do I get an honorary trident because I back the Navy up in this one? Like I get like a hat that has a trident or something. That's above my pay grade. Okay. <laughs> Jocko, somebody's got to have that knowledge. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's end it with like some live demos and cool. You know, it's too easy. Fling some bullets. Uh, let all the, uh, the gamers copy these, us. These airsoft guns shoot live bullets. That's weird. They do. That's they weird. do. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> so I'm going old school today. I haven't shot this thing. And I like that. I'm building one of those right now. I saw you had one. I just can't find that M68 optic. That's a comp. Is that a comp two or an old M68? It looks like a. Well, I mean, we're saying it looks find like a, some stuff when you, you know. <laughs> you do lots of trips. It's, it's you know. You sometimes things? things just pop up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he can take it. Okay, I'm gonna drop this steel. All right, you want to go first or you want me to go first or? Yeah. Let's do a couple of quick demos. So get a couple extra angle, a couple angles and um, do some fucking live fire. So from a high fork, all right? And then 
And if you want to just stand right about here, give me uh, from coming from this side of the doorway. You be do some low. Yeah, if you don't mind, do some low. Do you want? Do you want me to move it back a little bit? Yeah. All right. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna clear and save real quick. I gotta remember, I got a number one man, so the number one man's in front of me, so I'm just gonna simulate so you guys see what high carry coming in that corner looks like. One more again, again. Yeah, I'll, I'll be your number one man. Button hook for me. I'm just gonna button hook around. Yeah. The break, so. wait for him to get his dance out of the way, clear the space, make sure I don't flag my own leg and then drive that barrel up. And you could tell good CQB between the latency of the number one man entering and the time it takes for the second person to either clear his point of domination or actually engage a threat. Big latency. Just for the record, I would never uh, button hook a room like that. We're just doing that for uh, range constraints. Mm -hmm. Let's do uh, just one more with the high carry uh, on you as a number one man button hooking so you can right, see right. the difference in speed. Nice. Well, do some steel. Fired up. Yeah, it'd be good to actually time what you what the, the the time it takes to break the shot from high versus low. I challenge. That's one of the drills I do. I challenge myself all the time from the low ready and the high ready. And I honestly, as much as I'd love to say, like it's big. Yeah, it's like a major fucking difference. Yeah, it's, not. it's like point two seconds maybe you know it's not yeah. i mean it is faster but and that's why i said you know like for me personally it might just be because might just be because i'm so used to acquiring it from a from a high port yeah but um i don't think it's you know although i'm coming from here too i'm not coming from all the way down like we yeah. were just doing coming through the doorway yeah and i think that's the real assessment too is like people forget like a lot of people train this well, that's good as an individual skill set, but when are you ever going to be standing like this? If I'm moving to contact, my gun's upright and I'm moving over my optic or maybe even in my optic. If I'm moving like this, like what, what's the posture where you'll be in an amber phase? Where I'm not green, I'm not red, but I'm somehow amber. 
Like that doesn't make any sense. I don't get that either. I mean, the only time I could think of that is maybe like coming off a bird onto an LZ. Yeah. But in, inside a house, yeah, I don't really, I, do, I just don't see the point. Yeah. So, but, <clears throat> all right. Well, I think that about covers it. That was a good one. Yeah. It's just, you look really hot going through that doorway. Buddy. Really like that? Yeah. It, you know what? I it's, can't wait to watch it from slow mo. It felt good for once to see a Navy SEAL in front of me. Usually they're behind me. <laughs> So this is the first time I've actually been behind one and it felt right. It just felt good. Oh, you know. That's gotta be a good view for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. It I've was it was good. Up, you know? Yeah. My GoPro is attached to my belt. That's where I keep it, just so I can get the POV perspective. Right on. All right. Thanks for having me on your channel. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. Yeah. My pleasure.